In this video, we take a look at 50 plus changes and features found in the iOS 18.4 release candidate, and this is likely the same build that will ship next week to the public. If you appreciate videos like this, please like and subscribe. So the build number for the 18.4 release candidate is going to be 22E239, and it'll probably be the same build number that ships next week. And fun fact, first time I've seen Apple actually label it release candidate. And of course, Apple announced that the AirPods Max with the USB-C port would be receiving a notable software upgrade to bring lossless audio to the table. And we see evidence of those strings in the 18.4 release candidate. So in a surprise announcement for AirPods Max users, Apple says that 18.4 will add lossless audio when using the included USB-C cable as well as ultra low latency audio. So this will enable 24-bit 48 kilohertz lossless audio via Apple Music. And this also extends to spatial audio in Apple Music, providing an even more immersive, sonically accurate experience, according to Apple. But in my opinion, it's the ultra low latency that's really exciting about this update. It's gonna lower lag to the point where it's basically indiscernible from native built-in speakers on your Mac or your iPhone or iPad with regard to latency. So from a practical use case, this could have a notable impact on things like live streaming where the response delay needs to be as low as possible. And Apple is now selling a new USB-C to 3.5 millimeter audio cable for $39, which will support this new wired playback functionality. And what's cool is that this new cable is actually bi-directional. So if you look at the details there, you can see that you can use it to connect your AirPods Max to a 3.5 millimeter audio source, or you can use it to connect your iPhone or iPad to a 3.5 millimeter output destination. And CarPlay gets some nice upgrades. For instance, if you have a larger screen like the one in the F-150 Lightning, you get another row of app icons, which is nice. And 18.4 adds a new API for sports apps in CarPlay, adapting the now playing screen to sporting events. And as we told you in the previous beta, the 18.4 update adds support for NACS in Apple Maps for EVs. That's the Tesla charger. And in what may be a related thing to CarPlay, there's references to DAB, which stands for Digital Audio Broadcasting. It's a standard for basically internet radio. Now this never really took off in the United States, but I believe over in the UK and in Europe, uh, DAB is available. And in my opinion, I think it probably makes the most sense that this was a CarPlay related thing, but that's to be determined. Now the 18.4 beta is the first beta available for the iPhone 16e, which is noteworthy in and of itself. And if you haven't already seen my 30 minute expose into the iPhone 16e, you can watch it here as well. And one of the reasons why it was so long is because I focus a lot on Apple intelligence since this is really the first phone that has launched with day one availability of Apple intelligence out of the box. And it's noteworthy that Apple intelligence is coming to the EU for the first time, thanks to iOS 18.4. So in my 16E review, I walked through all of the available Apple intelligence features, including the new Siri, of course, chat GPT integration, writing tools, visual intelligence, image playgrounds, etc. But the real big story surrounding Apple intelligence in 18.4 is the fact that Apple has indefinitely delayed the new Siri features, which includes personal context understanding, on screen awareness, and in app actions. These things are still in development but they won't be coming with 18.4. In fact, they won't be coming with iOS 18 in any flavor. This is going to be an iOS 19 feature, but it doesn't seem like it's coming anytime soon. And this was a big deal because Apple advertised the iPhone 16 with these features in its marketing material, right? And needless to say, this caused a pretty big outcry, even from like diehard Apple fans like John Gruber, who usually gives Apple the benefit of the doubt, but he published a pretty scathing article about why this is such an embarrassment for Apple. I'll have it linked down below. Now, despite EU users finally having access to Apple intelligence in 18.4, what you won't find if you're in the EU is access to iPhone mirroring, which still is not yet available in the EU. So if you're looking for that, FYI. Now, despite the iPhone 15 Pro and the iPhone 16e for that matter, not having a camera control button, you can access visual intelligence now in 18.4 using the action button. So the iPhone 15 Pro, of course, 
Is Apple Intelligence compatible? It didn't have a camera control button, so you couldn't access visual intelligence, but now you can via the action button, just like you can on the 16E. So here is the 16E. Here I am invoking visual intelligence and I can use it to interface with ChatGPT. It can also identify certain things like plants and animals. And you can also do a reverse Google image search as well from visual intelligence. But that isn't the only visual intelligence related feature or addition to 18.4. Now, if you go into your control center, you'll see a new visual intelligence toggle there or a shortcut, I should say. And this allows you to add visual intelligence directly to your control center and invoke it from there, which is really cool, right? But of course, that being said, you can also add the same shortcut to your lock screen because you can add control center toggles right there. And now in 18.4, you can add a talk to Siri shortcut as well. So you could previously add type to Siri. Now you can add talk to Siri. It's nice to have options. And speaking of options, you can invoke visual intelligence via a Siri shortcut as well. And speaking of shortcuts, the zoom transition that I show you right here on the previous beta, that is no longer a thing. Seems to have reverted back to the sheet slide animation here in the release candidate. And in shortcuts, you now have an action to open individual conversations. So you can see open conversations, tap that right there, choose my conversation from a list of all my message threads like that. And now I'm gonna open my conversation with Ducky Benjamin. So I just tap it like this. And yeah, just ignore that photo of Betty Davis because for some reason, I don't even know why that came up in that thread, but I can't even remember. But nonetheless, there's also a new shortcut action for changing granular settings. So in things like calendars, for instance, you can go in here now and use shortcuts to change really granular settings that you normally have to go into the settings app to adjust. And here you have, for instance, one for Safari where you can change things like search engine. You can change how links are open, change how tabs are closed or when tabs are closed. It's super in depth. And speaking of Safari, there's connection security details that you'll now find when you go into the page information, you'll see connection security details, just tap there. And you can see that the connection is secure with a signed certificate. And when tapping the address bar in Safari, it's gonna pull up your recent searches. You can of course clear those if you want to, but that can be handy if you just wanna quickly search what you searched for before. However, what if you don't want those to appear, right? Like what if you just don't want that popping up? Well, you can just go to settings and then go to Safari preferences and there you'll see show recent searches. So you can just turn that little toggle off and now you don't see the recent searches anymore. There's also a new adaptive noise control icon that has been slightly tweaked. It used to be like a little rainbow icon, but now it's just a gray icon. And there's some subtle tweaks to the TV app. For instance, the add to library button right here. And you'll notice a new animation for the skip forward and go backwards buttons. New arrows on the focus toggle in control center just hint to the fact that there are more options lurking beneath, whereas that may not have been as clear when there were no arrows on that button. And the cellular data toggle now shows signal strength in control center. So this is actually the real time signal strength for your cellular data connection being reflected right there on the toggle itself. And you can see that that matches the actual cellular connection. And the volume slider will change from white to blue as you raise the volume. The same thing goes for the brightness slider. It'll go from white to yellow as you adjust the brightness. And there's a new more button in the Apple Wallet app on the main page. Just tap that to access things like settings, orders, etc. And you'll find a new ambient music feature in Control Center. So you just go in, add one of the four toggles there. So in this case, I just added the Sleep Ambient Music Station. You tap it and it starts playback just like that. So the cool thing is this is its own little standalone mini app. And it's based on the structure of the now playing screen in the music app, but there are no other real functions like for instance, you can't go to that artist if you wanted to by tapping the artist, you can of course go back, go forward and play pause. And as you can see, like I said, it's its own little standalone little mini app called Ambient Music.
So there are four different ambient music choices. And for each of those four choices, you can choose it to assign a specific playlist. Uh, they give you several different playlists to choose from. So piano, ambient, chill, lo-fi jazz, pure chill. But you can also choose a playlist from your own library if you want to and assign it to that. Uh, so you don't have to use one of the canned ones. You can just choose one that you prefer directly from your library. And once you start playback, it'll play back that particular playlist from your library. And again, since this is a control center toggle, that means that you can add this directly, for instance, to your lock screen. So one of the four ambient music stations. And of course you can go in and configure the playlist. There you go. And you can also add it to the action button. So I can just scroll over, add a control, choose a station. I can even go in and configure that playlist as well. And then I could just press the, the action button and it'll start playing back that ambient music station. Just like that iPhone 16 owners can assign a camera app shortcut directly to the camera control button. But in iOS 18.4, if you go to settings, camera, camera control, you'll see that the launch camera shortcut now has its own dedicated page to choose your apps from. So there I just launched Instagram with camera control. And now you can set the default translate app. If you go to settings, apps, default apps, you'll see there translation, and this will let you set as default a third party translate app. The little banner that appeared when doing a back tap gesture on previous versions of 18.4 beta no longer seems to be a thing. So I'm going to add a back tap gesture to launch the app switcher. So when I double tap on the back of my device, the app switcher should open. Previously, it would have shown me a little notification, but now that notification seems to have been suppressed. And speaking of notifications, if you go to settings and you go to notifications, you'll see prioritize notifications now. So this is an Apple intelligence feature that will show notifications based on their priority. And you can actually enable or disable various apps down below. But this is an example of a priority notification. This being a medication reminder from the health app. And you can see how it's sort of separated to stand out from the other notifications. The albums list in the photos app gets a new key photo view. So you can switch from list view like this over to key photo like this. And you get new photo filters as well. So two new filters, one not in an album. So any photo that's not in an album will be filtered. And then you also have shared with you, which is super handy because that contains all the photos that were shared with you for instance, via messages. And this is super handy when you want to find a specific photo that you know someone sent to you. I can see myself using that quite often. Now there's also the ability to sort media types in photos. So the media types and also utilities for that matter. Of course you can scroll through those, but it's nice now you have an edit button in the upper right hand corner. So you can use the drag handle to adjust and put the ones that you use most often near the top for easy access. And that way, when you go back and then you swipe over to the first page of the media types, you're going to see those top four appear first. And now image playgrounds in 18.4 finally gives access to the sketch option that joins the illustration and animation options for these AI generated images. So you see animation and you see illustration and here is sketch. So I like this better than illustration, but not as good as animation. I think sketch is the second best option. And now you'll find a new Genmoji button that spells out the name Genmoji instead of just a little icon to make it even more obvious that that's where you access Genmoji. So if I tap that, I can just put in some, some terms there. So duck flying and create my custom emoji just like that. And there's new emoji in 18.4. So you get the face with bags and then you also get the fingerprint emoji. You also get this little guy, which is a leafless tree. You also get this little guy, a root vegetable and a harp. And last but not least, you have the shuffle. Honestly, not the most exciting emoji additions, but you know, I'll take it. 
18.4 also features a new animation for the secure indicator light. So in this case, this indicates the microphone is in use for voice memos. Watch what happens though, when the voice memos goes to the dynamic island, you can see that secure indicator light animates to move outside of the island. And ChatGPT has been available with Apple Intelligence for quite some time now, and it's available as an extension under the Apple Intelligence in settings. But what's cool is that ChatGPT won't be the only extension. Yes, Apple is preparing Google Gemini integration with Apple Intelligence, and most likely it will be available via that same path under settings, Apple intelligence. And there's a slightly altered new type to Siri animation that you'll find in 18.4, very subtle. And there's a mail category explainer, which you'll find both on the iPhone and the iPad, because yes, now you have the updated mail app on the iPad and on the Mac as well. So that's a great thing to finally have the category system that we've been enjoying on the iPhone for a while now. And of course you can go in and disable that if you don't like the categories. Apple also launched new Apple News Plus food recipes, which is a really cool feature actually. And it also alludes to what I think may be coming down the pipeline as far as new Apple hardware is concerned, but this allows you to not only view ingredients, but actually get step-by-step -step directions in a nice, extra large view that's perfect for the kitchen, right? And even has the ability to set timers directly from within the directions. Now, it doesn't take a lot of imagination to picture something like a home pad, which is a screen slash home pod sort of thing combined that would be ideal for the kitchen area, be ideal for recipes. And I don't think Apple put all that effort into making recipes just for Apple News Plus subscribers. I think this is something that they're going to roll out to a new device class, which we also found within the iOS 18.4 code. Expect a HomePad like device sooner than later. And Apple has also added dual arrows to the eSIM switcher, which appears in the upper left hand corner of the dialer. If you have two eSIMs configured and that allows you to quickly switch between each line and in iOS 18.4 and Mac OS 15.4, you get the new proximity based setup, which lets you set up your Mac using, you guessed it, your iPhone. So it'll recognize that you have a new Mac. So here on my M4 Mac mini, it wants me to set up this new Mac mini and I can do so starting directly from my phone. It'll verify with face ID. And then I hold the phone up to the Mac, just like you do when setting up another iPhone, hold it up to the little pattern there. And now it'll automatically log you in to your Apple ID. And in 18.4, there's a new age attestation feature when going through a new setup. So it's gonna ask you, are you a child, a teen or an adult? If you choose child, it wants you to connect to a family account. If you choose a teen or adult, then you can go through the normal setup process. And robot vacuum support over matter. It's not something I've been able to personally test yet, but the folks over at Smart Home Center were able to do so. Hopefully I'll be able to get my hands on a compatible robot vacuum soon, like the SwitchBot S10. But this is gonna be really nice to be able to control your RoboVac directly from HomeKit. And it'll be nice to be able to set up things like automations and stuff to play nice with other smart home devices. And if you have an Apple Vision Pro, you're running the latest Vision OS beta, you'll find the new Vision Pro app, which lets you manage your Apple Vision Pro and you'll find the ability to start a Vision Pro guest session from a nearby iPhone or iPad. So ladies and gentlemen, that has been a look at over 50 new changes and features for iOS 18.4 release candidate. What's your favorite new feature? Let me know down below and be sure to check out these other videos that you might enjoy as well. This is Jeff with 9to5Mac.